Okay, so I passed the CPA exam on my first try, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly you know, how I studied every day, my, my strategies, my techniques, and what I did to make sure I passed all the CPA exams on my first attempt. So yeah, let's jump into it. Okay, so right away, I will just point out the fact that I used Becker as my review course, and I really liked it. A lot of really good information, you know, it's professional, clean, just probably the like most professional and I don't know, most popular review course there is, and for good reason. Um, it is a lot of content, but I mean, that's just the CPA exam, that's what you gotta expect. Um, but in no on review courses, I do think maybe a little bit too much emphasis is placed on, oh, like, which review course is the best, which one should I get? Like, they all follow the AICPA blueprint, they all have kind of the same content, maybe presented a little differently. Um, so I wouldn't stress too much about which review course you get, but I will say, I got Becker, I enjoyed it, and it is definitely the most popular review course out there. Okay, so my study plan for Becker, and I will also just say I did this a couple years ago, so the format was a little bit different, but what I would do is each module in the book had a lecture. So you would watch this lecture, and it was like Peter Olinto or what were the other guys, like Garrity, I think the same sort of people they have now, giving a lecture, and it was basically them reading through a chapter in the book and telling you what to highlight, what to underline, what to circle, all that sort of stuff. And they basically just read the textbook, told you what to do, and you followed along in the textbook. So I did that for every single module. Um, some people will ask like, oh, can I skip some? And skip at your own risk. I think it's worth it just to, you know, make sure you hit every single one and be, you know, extremely just detail oriented. Make sure you cover all your bases um, and watch each one. But I do know now it's a little different. They have, what are they called? Like lecture videos? No, not lecture. Concept videos. They have concept videos and it doesn't really follow the textbook. So in that case, what I would do is I would watch the, the concept video and I would just write notes in a spiral bound notebook like this. Um, so that's what I would do if I was taking it today with the concept videos. But the concept videos were not a thing when I was taking the exam, so like I said, what I would do, I would watch every single lecture, take notes in the textbook, but at the same time, I would have my notebook on the side, and I was just making any notes that I wanted to, if I felt I needed to. But for the most part, my notes were in here. So that is what I did for the concept videos slash lectures. Oh, and just another note on notes, I hand wrote all my notes. I know some people like, you know, typing them out, but handwriting notes, it's been shown in many studies that the physical act of writing something out really helps you remember it. So yes, it might take more time, but think of it as like a trade-off. You know, you spend more time writing down in the first place, but you'll spend less time remembering it in, you know, the future. So I think it's worth it. Handwrite your notes, it'll help you remember it. And it's just really nice to have something physical to reference and look back at. Oh, and one more thing. You can speed up the lectures or concept videos, so I would do like 1.5 speed just to, you know, get it to go a bit quicker um, so I could cover more material. But don't do that at the expense of like you not understanding or remembering anything. So if you need to just do regular speed, do that. It's not worth it to speed it up and not fully understand the material. Okay, so after I watched the lectures, I moved on to the multiple choice questions. And every module has, I don't know, anywhere from five to 50 multiple choice questions. At least that's what it was when I was taking the exam. And after the lecture, I'd go directly into multiple choice and I would complete anywhere from 40% to 100% of the multiple choice, just depending on what I felt like doing. And during the multiple choice, I would, <clears throat> have my spiral bound notebook with me. You know, I would read the questions on the screen, try to figure it out, you know, reference any notes I had in here, but, or in the textbook, but I would try to hopefully do it without notes. Um, but if I needed them, I would reference them. And, you know, answer all the questions, things I get right, things I get wrong, I would make notes in my spiral bound notebook as I needed to. So, yeah, just going through as many multiple choice. It was kinda, I kinda just felt how many I wanted to do, you know, if it was going really well, I was like, ah, maybe I only need to do 40. If I was kind of struggling or wanted to like learn this material, um, like make it even stronger in my memory, I would maybe do up to 80 or 100% of them. It really was just kind of whatever I felt like. 
um, also depending on how many questions there were. But if I only did 40%, it's not like I would never come back and do the remaining 60%. Part of my daily stub study habit was to always go back and do multiple choice questions from a previous module. So every day, you know, I'm making progress, watching new lectures, doing mul new multiple choice, but I'm going back to a previous chapter and, you know, pounding out some of those multiple choice just to keep it fresh in my memory. So just because you don't do all of those multiple choice on the first go round doesn't mean you're never going to see them again. You always have to go back and, you know, reference the old stuff, practice the old stuff and keep it fresh in your mind. Okay, so I watch the lectures, I do the multiple choice, and then I move on to the simulations. And every module, or almost every module, had a few simulations, and I never did them, kind of. I, I just hated simulations, so I would, like I said, do the lectures, do the multiple choice, and then I would just skip the simulations and move on to the next module and start that lecture and that multiple choice, skip those simulations, move on to the next one, because I hated the simulation. But obviously you can't just not do simulations because you don't like them. Like, I obviously had to do them. So what I would do is because I hated them so much and I was like, this is just gonna drain my energy, make me not wanna study. I'm just gonna skip over it, move on to the next section. But every once in a while I would say, okay, this is just gonna be a, a crappy day, a day that I don't like, but I need to pound out some simulations. And I would go back to previous modules where I hadn't done the simulations and just work through some of those simulations. I wouldn't do all of them um, because there's a lot of them and you don't necessarily need to. I kind of felt like if I understood the concept and understood kind of how the simulation like software and you know test taking uh, technique worked, then I didn't need to cover everything. Um, so I would just make sure to go back, pick some simulations, work through them, make sure I understood how simulations worked and you know kind of just practice my skills in that software. But again, this is just my strategy. Everyone, you know, maybe you love the simulations. Um, so. It, this is just what worked for me. I knew trying to do simulations every day was just gonna drain my motivation and make me hate life. So I skipped them, saved them for one day, and kind of just spent a few hours pounding them out. And uh, you know, that was, that was enough for me personally. And yeah, that was kind of my daily study routine for learning new material. Watch the concept videos, take notes, do the multiple choice, take notes, and then skip the simulations and come back and do them at a later date. Like that's how I progressed through every single day. But another really important part of the CPA exam is, like I said, coming back and refreshing the old material, making sure you, you know, you remember it, you keep it fresh in your mind and you don't forget it. So that's also part of the daily study strategy. And like I said, going back and reviewing multiple choice from older modules every day is important. Make sure you do that. Um, another thing I did was reread my notes. So every day as you go through, you know, you take notes in the concepts, you take notes in the multiple choice and the simulations, and you're gonna compile a notebook full of, you know, really great notes that you should go back and reference relatively often. You know, every day I would go back, especially before bed, because before bed, your brain is like, it's the best time to learn new things because your mind like works on when you're asleep. I don't know, it's some science stuff that I don't really get, but before bed is the best time to study new material. It also might help you fall asleep, so, just read a few pages of your notes before bed every night. You keep that old material fresh. And um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it personally. But I will say, I don't recommend going and rereading the textbook necessarily. Like obviously if there's a section you don't understand, you know, reread that and revisit that. But I wouldn't say a good study strategy is to open the textbook and read an entire module, like 15 pages. Like that's, that's extremely time, con time consuming and studies show very ineffective. You'd be much better off reviewing flashcards, um, doing multiple choice, or even just trying to explain topics in your own words. Those are three of the most powerful study methods there are. Um, but yeah, I definitely don't recommend rereading the textbook. But yeah, Becker has practice quizzes for a bunch of modules, which kind of compiles all the multiple choice from, you know, different chapters or different sections, I don't know, um, and puts it into a practice quiz. And I would recommend doing that, like one or two of those a day, because just takes old multiple choice, puts them in a random order, and you have to work through them. Really good for remembering the old material. Like I said before, same with flashcards. Super good for uh, remembering old material. So yeah, that's my strategy for learning new material and keeping the old material fresh, is just every day doing a bit of each, you know? Progressing by doing the new concept videos and the new, new, new multiple choice, but also going back, rereading some notes, 
doing old multiple choice, all that sort of stuff. So it's a good balance. And that's what I would do all the way up till the end of the course. And then, you know, you kind of have another, it depends when you schedule your exam, but you have probably another couple weeks until you take the exam. And that's all about just review, 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 keep doing multiple choice, keep reading notes, flashcards, and just make sure that stuff is stuck in your brain. But the last thing that I will like speak specifically about are the simulated exams. I think most review courses have these. Becker's simulated exams were very good. They looked exactly like what you would see on the exam day. And there were like two or three of them. And I would recommend taking them within about 10 days before your final exam. Take all of them. Like these are extremely beneficial. You should not skip the simulated exams. And what I would do is I would take the exams in the most exam-like fashion possible. You know, I'd go to a room by myself, phone, notes, everything are away. Just me and my laptop taking this exam. I would give it my best shot. Um, I would submit it and I would usually be kind of disappointed with the score, which is normal. Becker's simulated exams are notoriously difficult, which is good because it prepares you. So if you get a poor score, don't be too discouraged. You're not alone. Um, so yeah, I would do that. And then I would, you know, set my laptop aside for a couple hours, go decompress, do whatever, just ignore, ignore it for a little bit. And then sometime in the next 24 hours, I would come back, sit down and go through every question on the exam and take detailed notes on each one. Let me see if I can find some notes from one of my simulated exams in here. All right, so I found my notes for my second simulated exam for BEC, I believe it is. I don't know how well you can see this, but it just says review exam number two. And I just went through every question on the exam, whether I got it right or wrong, you know, I would make some notes on it um, and just make sure I was learning something from everything. And then when you're done, you have like a great couple of pages that serve as a study guide. Like these are notes pretty much directly from a CPA exam. I know it's not a real exam, but it's exam like, and you just created a study guide. You went over each question, you, you learned it, you know, your brain got that, but now you have it on paper that you can review over the next couple days before your exam. So that's definitely what I would recommend. Take the exam, give it your best shot, review it in detail, take good notes on it, and then review those notes. Um, and that's gonna be a great prep for the real exam. So yeah, that was like my daily study routine to prepare for the CPA exams and it served me really well. I, you know, did well on the exams and it wasn't too much studying. Um, so I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for uh, a routine. But just to recap, it was watch every single mod or every single lecture or concept video, take notes on it, then move on to the multiple choice, answer 40 to 100%, kind of whatever you're feeling like, and take notes as you do so, um, and then move on to the next module and watch that lecture and then do those multiple choice but eventually come back review some simulations make sure you understand how they work understand the material um because you, you can't skip over that um so yeah do that to progress along but every day as well make sure you go back read some old notes do some old multiple choice questions and you know some flashcards as well and just keep doing that every day progress a little further in the course but make sure you refresh the old material as well until you get to the end of the course and then make sure you take advantage of the simulated exams, take really good notes after the exam and review those notes before the real exam comes. Review those notes, review multiple choice, review flashcards, um, review your, your old notes from the lectures, do all that sort of stuff. Just review, review, review. Make sure you haven't forgotten any old material and just give yourself as good a shot as possible at passing this exam because it is tough and even though you can take it again, just give yourself a great shot, your first try, so hopefully you don't have to do it again. But yeah, that's exactly what I did, and it worked great for me, so hopefully it works great for you as well. Um, just a little you know, plug here, I do have a CPA exam newsletter where I send out great newsletters every week with practical advice for helping you guys pass the CPA exam, so if you're interested, the link is in the description below. But if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more. But yeah, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.